Hey all here OS Reviews, today we're taking a quick look at the Asus Chromebook C425T. This is a model that was actually released about a year or two ago, so it's not completely new on the market. Originally priced at around $330, it was sold for around $120 bucks for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and even now, extending out from the sale, it can still be found for around $130 bucks on Best Buy's website. It's a slightly older model, so I suspect they're trying to blow out the inventory, and when it goes out, it's probably not going to be replenished. But regardless, because of the huge discount, the fact that it's still on sale, I wanted to take a closer look at how this model performs and share some of my thoughts. So the C4 to 5 is kind of a mid-tier Chromebook uh, in the sense that it's powered by the Intel Core M3 8100Y processor, which is pretty energy efficient, but it's going to be significantly more powerful than anything in the Intel Celeron line, for example, which is much more common if you're paying $100 to $200 for a Chromebook. Core M3s and Core i3s are more typically found on $300 to $400 laptops, which again makes this seem like a pretty crazy value on paper. In fact, this uh, 8100Y Core M3 chip is the same exact processor found on Google's Pixelbook Go, which right now still commands a price north of $400. It's rocking a 14-inch nano edge display, meaning that it has very slim bezels, it's a full HD 1080p resolution panel, and they claim that it's in the dimensions of a 13 inch laptop, but they've squished in, again, a 14 inch screen, a pretty light 2.8 pound package. Otherwise, what's impressive here is this is a backlit keyboard as well, which is another selling point that you pretty much never find on a $100 laptop. All of this is complemented by 8 gigs of built-in RAM, and even though the Best Buy website states 4 gigabytes, that's actually a typo because there is 8 gigs on all of the base models that they're currently selling. Now I will also mention that there is a Flip C434 that you can find as another alternative, which has a touchscreen. Uh, this version here does not, it's just a matte display. Uh, but if you are looking at the touch-enabled version, which has the exact same processor, you are still going to be paying around $100 to $150 more. So here we have the packaging. It is very simple. We've got just the same specs reiterated again here on the back. Aside from some quick warranty cards and user guides, you have just a USB Type-C charging adapter, which does not fold down in terms of the prongs. That's one thing I do wish they could have designed to make it a little more travel friendly, but nonetheless, good to see that it is using a standard and can quickly top up the laptop in around an hour and a half. So taking a closer look at the design of this C425, first of all, it does have a aluminum lid here on the front, which makes it feel more premium than you'd expect. Granted, it's not full metal in the sense that the back and the deck of the keyboard are going to be made out of a regular polycarbonate plastic, but that little metal accent here on the lid still makes it feel just a touch more elegant. Now on the side, we have access to the first USB Type-C port, which is fully specced, allowing you to use this for HDMI video output, charging, and data. There's a full-size Type-A USB port, 3.5mm headphone jack, and then on the other side we have a micro SD card reader, and then the second full spec USB Type-C port, and that is it. It's still considered as an Ultrabook because of how slim and light it is. There are no fans for cooling like most Chromebooks. With that being said, I would have liked to see maybe the addition of a full-sized HDMI port. Now on the very back here, just one final look, there are two stereo speakers which are facing downwards, which makes them a little easier to cover up. A placement of on the side or maybe on the top would have been more preferred, but overall it does the trick. Now the hinge of the C425, as you can see there, has a pretty conventional two-set design, one hinge on the left, one on the right, as opposed to one continuous strip on the middle, it's more similar to something like a MacBook. Uh, I point that out because this is not a model that has a touchscreen, and so in my personal preference, I would have actually preferred something that has maybe just one single continuous hinge. I find it to be a little bit better in terms of durability, since this one doesn't go 360 anyways, but overall still does the trick. You'll also find two small rubber bumpers there on the edge, because like a lot of recent Chromebooks from Aces. This has almost this ergonomic or ergo hinge design. And as you can see there, that hinge just pushes outwards a little bit more, so it actually comes in contact with your surface first. The benefit is it does raise it ever so slightly at a tilted angle when you are typing, but the downside is it produces a little bit more stress on the bottom portion there of that display. Your surface there needs to be also flat on the base of when you are setting it down. 
So regardless, when you are opening up this laptop, which by the way, it doesn't quite open up with one hand, so you still have to kind of use two hands to fully open it up, we are granted to a very clean keyboard trackpad setup, inclusive of a very generously sized trackpad, which although it is made out of a polycarbonate plastic, as opposed to glass on even more expensive laptops, it glides along just fine and has actually a pretty satisfying action to it when you're pressing down. The keyboard is also excellent. So to begin with, it is a backlit keyboard, as you can tell. So in darker environments, the light will start to kick on and just make it a little easier to see as you're typing. And it does have variable adjustments to the brightness as well. Tapping on Alt and the brightness up and down keys will allow you to change the brightness of the backlight from being completely off, as you can see there, versus this is mode one, two, three, four, five. Now, one complaint that I have seen floating around from other folks that own this laptop is that because it has this metallic keyboard accent going on, let's say we are turning off the backlights completely off, at certain angles might actually bleed into the lettering, uh, making them not quite as distinctive as if they had used something like black text instead. Uh, with that being said, again, you can always use the aforementioned backlight, and even if you turn them on during daytime, I do find that they are still visible enough, at least in my usage, that it didn't pose too many issues. Perhaps more importantly, the keyboard here is super comfortable in terms of depth of travel, has a lot of satisfying click and action to it, but none of the keys feel loose or too wobbly either. It's a very premium typing experience that's easy to get used to, and where the 14-inch size of this laptop that has a more conventional 16 by 9 aspect ratio comes into play. Result in one of the most comfortable typing experiences that I've found so far in a sub $200 laptop when it comes to the tactility of all the keys as you're pressing down. So coming over to that 14 inch display and overall we are getting a pretty solid panel here as well. It's an IPS screen which means that viewing angles are also quite generous. Even as you're looking at it from different angles, colors are still mostly preserved as you can see there. And it also is a matte display, meaning that it prevents too much glare from occurring. Uh, so it's not going to be quite as glossy as something that has a touch screen surface to it. So overall it's a very pleasant looking panel, uh, even though it's not going to give you as rich colors as something like OLED or AMOLED, but that's to be expected on a model that you're paying so little for. And the hinge here does indeed fold completely flat, so basically 180 degrees as you can see there. So in case, let's say, a child is pushing the screen all the way back, it's not going to break on you either, which is good, even though it's not a touch screen. The very top here also features the 2 megapixel webcam, which does the trick, although there is no privacy shutter on this particular model, but overall it still is a very beautiful and modern looking design, I have to say. Now in terms of the software experience, Chrome OS has evolved to become quite capable in its own right. It's no longer only a web browser, but these days you're able to also install Android apps, anything from the Play Store, uh, there's nothing really that this thing can't run from multimedia to productivity tools and you can get a kind of Linux desktop experience not to mention other remote desktop tools that are available from Google as well which allow you to access Windows on Chromebook as long as you have a Windows laptop that is connected to the internet. Plus, of course, all the power still of the full desktop browser, Chrome, uh, which is as good as on any other laptop out there, uh, where you can install additional extensions, super fast, super fluid on this Core M3, coupled with 8 gigs of RAM, which are still very powerful specs, I have to say, on a Chromebook. Yes, perhaps if you're paying even more for something that has an Intel Core i5 or Core i7, you'll get even more blazing performance, but the M3 here is keeping up like a dream. And here's a couple more tabs that we are opening up, and you can tell that despite being complex web pages, everything is still loading along here really just fine. I'm able to still read back articles. You can tell how quickly things are loading there. And this model does have, of course, dual band, Wi-Fi, along with Bluetooth 5.0. So connectivity options are pretty good, although it doesn't have cellular built on it. In my testing, I was trying out over 20, 25 tabs, and this Chromebook still felt relatively fast when jumping back and forth between YouTube videos, different articles and web pages. It didn't get too slow or choppy either, which is very good. One thing I will point out though is because the C425 did come out a little bit earlier, uh, one unfortunate part is 
Google has set kind of an expiry date on every single Chromebook. It represents the number of years in which a Chromebook will continue to receive OTA software updates. This particular model will get it until June of 2026, meaning that we have just a little over three years, about three and a half years of additional life out of the system. After that point, the laptop will continue to function. In fact, it will be still perfectly usable for web browsing. You just will no longer receive additional software updates, uh, even if they are rolling out, unless you are installing your own version of Cloud Ready or some third-party OS. I think that overall update schedule from Chrome OS can be a little bit on the conservative side compared to what we find on Windows or Mac OS, for instance, there tends to be a little bit more of a longer support. And hopefully that's something that Google just continues to be better at. Again, display here is 1080p. Full HD resolution is gonna be the max that uh, you can use to take advantage of this panel. So let's choose that and pull up stats for nerds. All right, so some takeaways here being that the speaker quality is also pretty decent in terms of clarity. It doesn't distort at higher volume levels, and it's actually quite good for a ultra thin laptop. With that being said, it could definitely be a little bit louder at times, uh, but still does the trick. You can always use your own headphones or Bluetooth speakers to further elevate that experience, but about average, I'd say, for a Chromebook. Here we have just a couple of drops there towards the beginning as it was still buffering, and keep in mind we still have some other tabs uh, there in the background, but overall you get the idea. It's still a very smooth experience. Videos are quick to load. It looks great on this panel. Getting some schoolwork as well as has some office work done really without any problems here, even on slightly more complex sheets and docs. Um, other cloud solutions that you can leverage, including Google Collab, whether you want to do a little bit of coding or Jupyter Notebook, you can also do on here and handle really without any complaints. So again, all of this is possible thanks to the fairly reliable internet connection, which gets a pretty tight signal um, as you're using the laptop, never found it to be too low in terms of signal strength. The laptop does get a little bit warm towards the bottom right hand section when you are pressing it a little bit harder and that means let's say you have 30 tabs open in the browser along with uh, some other documents that you're trying to run but it never gets too hot I would say it never thermal throttles in my testing which is good in terms of the battery life this is the part where I think it's just average for a Chromebook uh, meaning that I was able to get a little bit shy of seven hours of usage out of this on regular consumption that means watching back some videos screen Screen brightness at around 40 to 50 percent and also doing some document typing as well as emails it was able to last me through a full work day but not necessarily too much longer past that when it comes to gaming kind of as aforementioned uh, in terms of any of the native Android titles, you can still play back on here really without too many issues. Just keeping in mind that you do have to rely on that trackpad and keyboard to play along or a mouse since there is no touchscreen capability, which would have been a little bit more versatile admittedly, but still does the job. And at least it still gets you a fairly smooth experience thanks to that Core M3 chip uh, that we have running the show here. So not too bad, I suppose. If you wanna do more serious gaming, of course, on a Chromebook, you have to be looking at cloud stream streaming solutions since Google Stadia is unfortunately no longer a viable option as it's shutting down. Uh, you will have to look towards alternatives like the Microsoft X Cloud uh, if you want to play back more demanding AAA titles. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of this Asus C425T. And I'm glad to say that it really is an excellent value at this current price range in terms of the performance and the specs that you're getting. The extra RAM and processor are certainly helping in terms of just keeping things taking along and just feeling more premium as well as faster than the typical laptop that you'll find for sub $200. You can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Asus C425T.